been so long since we've seen each other and today I want to create another video and this video is going to be around another uh, infinite VJ loop kind of style. We're going to be showing some new uh, tricks and techniques I've learned from Midge Sinevive, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I'll go ahead and link it <coughs> down below. He, um, for full disclosure, he often shares a lot of his Blender files and I think it would be nice for us to kind of dive in. I kind of reverse engineered and figured out how does it look this way and what does what. And I think it'd be cool to share that with the community given that he already kind of shared the Blender files, so I'm sure he won't mind. Keep in mind, um, you know, if you're gonna go ahead and use it professionally or something, please feel free to credit um, him or me in particular uh, and try to change it up to your own liking. It can be done with any shape. But nonetheless, let's just dive right on in. All right, friends. So first things first, per usual, you're going to press A to select everything, X to delete. Once you have everything deleted, make sure we have ambient inclusion, bloom, screen space reflections on. And we're going to also turn on motion blur this time. Now, the next thing for everyone that is new to setting up these loops is you're going to want to make sure that your animation, so you're going to press edit and go to animation and default interpolation, you want that to be linear. I believe Bezier is typically the default, but you want linear because you just want it to continue on. You don't want it to be a curve. And at that point, people will know where it starts and where it ends. So once you have that done, we're ready to get things rocking and rolling. Okay, so press Shift A and bring in a circle. Don't click anything. Click down on the left hand corner. Make sure the vertices are set to three. This is how you make a triangle. Once you have this set, go ahead and press tab and then F. So essentially we just went into edit mode and then we selected everything. So you can press A then press F to fill it. Then we're going to go and press RX 90. And you can see we have a bit of our triangle here now. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and get it closer. Once you have our triangle, I'm just going to rename it and call it triangle base loop. Press this wrench, click add modifier, I'm going to bevel it. I'm just going to go ahead and bevel it by a little bit on the vertices. Just so I give it that sci fi kind of vibe. That's good enough. And the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is once we have that bevel set up, we're just going to go ahead and apply that modifier. Then you're going to go ahead and press tab once again, switch it to press three so you can switch it on the faces, select one of the faces. We're just going to press E to extrude, give it a nice little size, nothing too crazy. Um, I think this is about good for me. I'm going to go ahead and click both these faces by holding down shift and clicking delete the face okay now you can kind of see we have our triangle our starting point here and you're going to press shift a bring in another empty and this will be a plane axis now i'm going to go ahead and call mine by pressing f2 triangle dupe controller and you'll see what we're going to do in a second here so <clears throat> within your triangle that we have we're going to create an array and we're going to turn off relative offset, turn on object offset, and the object is going to be the dupe controller. And what we're going to do here is simply select our empty, rotate it 90 degrees, and go back to our base loop. I think we can do constant offset, I believe. I forget exactly how to specifically do this. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Once you have it kind of set up, you're going to want to go ahead and just scale the empty. So what we did here was we have an empty and we applied an array modifier onto our original object, which is just a triangle. And on the empty, we scaled it a little bit 
and what you can see here is once you change the count now look at that you have the triangle duplicating and you could even honestly do this to an infinite amount but we're just gonna do it by like four this time so both tilde select this deselected <coughs> it said four actually three we don't want too we don't want too much going on here in my opinion <coughs> once we have this setup we're gonna go ahead and bring in another array and <coughs> if you guessed by now what we're essentially gonna do <coughs> is we're gonna offset this and kind of create like a tunnel so I'm gonna go ahead and make zero I believe it would be on the z-axis <coughs> and what you can do here is at this point I'm not gonna bring in a, I'm gonna bring in a camera because I want to make sure I'm building in the right direction here so <coughs> the way I did that was I press tilde front when I say press I press and hold shift a and then bring in the camera here okay all right so it looks like our camera is going to be going this direction not that direction so we're going to want to build it on the negative so what i'd like to do is just look on the top side and hold down shift as you drag just so you can really scrub it properly and i got my number to be around negative 0.314 then the next part is we're gonna go ahead and build out our array. So maybe like 50 or, hmm. I did 100 on my first go, but I feel like 50, 100 could be okay. So it doesn't really matter in my opinion in terms of how long we have this set up. What you want in the animation is the camera to start at the start and end at the end of the tunnel. So I'm gonna do mine just for like 100 to give it a bit of some room for the triangles that we're gonna put inside here. And what I wanna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and um, change my view to wireframe so I can kind of see what's going on here. Zoom out a little bit. And with the camera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some keyframing here just to make sure things work. With the camera, I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the location on the Y axis and then I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it by holding control so it's very precise so we're gonna have it right around 31 and then what we're gonna do is just oops sorry you want to bring the animation to the end so mine's gonna be 250 seconds I mean 250 50 frames. I'm actually going to change it to 300 so it's 10 seconds instead. And then we're just going to do what I just did pretty much. Just drag it. 31. Enter that single keyframe. Oops. And you'll see right now we have our camera just kind of sliding on through. Let's make sure it's to the very end. We want it to be right on the dot if anything we can just okay looks like looks like we could possibly add a few more maybe right about here 105 just so it kind of like ends okay i'm gonna go ahead and right click down here give it a vertical split so you can for anyone that doesn't know you can right click any edge around your blender and then just kind of give it little splits like this and I'm gonna go ahead and just view camera in here make it solid bring my animation back to the start just so I can kind of witness what's going on here so you can kind of see my camera is just moving on through It's looking kind of weird and janky right now, but don't don't fret too much on all that. Okay. So next step <coughs> is we're gonna keep playing with this. And what we're gonna do essentially is we wanna bring in those little cuts and holes within our 
um, huge kind of like tunnel here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is first bring in a little subdivider. Now, if your computer is not too strong, I suggest maybe not going too crazy on this, but you can get the gist. I'm going to do three, render three. You can kind of see some stuff going on here. Then what we're going to do now is bring in a vertex weight, which is somewhere over here. Vertex weight edit. Okay. In the vertex group, we're going to go click this green boy, click that plus icon, I'm going to name it mask. Then what I'm going to do next here is go to texture, um, this little checkerboard, texture properties, click new. And I'm going to call it mask as well, just for consistency's sake. Go down to distorted noise, make it cell noise, distortion cell noise. Bring up the size. Um, and that's fine for now. Okay, let's go back to our triangle base loop. Let's make this mask. Let's bring in a mask, which is gonna be right here. Let's make this the mask. Click these invert. Okay. And the one thing I forgot to change here was add group add, and, and then for the fall off, let's open that up and click this button. Now you'll see here, we have a bit more of an exciting kind of composition here. Now, if you want to go in and kind of change some things, I suggest going in here and you can play with the size. You see it gets a lot more hectic and more interesting, someone can say. You can even, you honestly could like really dabble with a lot of different, um, different types of noises and textures, but you can kind of see what's going on here. It works well. I'm going to change mine back to moves to, and this one's to, let's make this around like five actually. Okay. Damn guys, I totally forgot what this was set up as. I think it was one and two. I want it to be a bit more chaotic, so. I said it's a 1-1 one, because one, I feel like that one looks pretty good. Okay. Now what we're going to do next here is add, I'm going to stop this animation. I'm going to go ahead and add a solidifier modification. So that will make everything look a lot nicer, in my opinion. Um, and you can just kind of play with the thickness here. It's by your own discretion. Personally, I keep the number really low, but you can kind of see here now it looks like we have a lot of floating objects, things looking real random. And the way I like to check to make sure things are looping, we keep frame down zero, go back to 300. It's kind of hard to tell, but I'm gonna set up a bit of a collection loop here in a second. So these are the modifiers you should have. We have an array, then Another array, and then a subdivision, a vertex weight edit, a mass, a solidify. You could possibly toss another subdivision, but personally, I wouldn't do that. I'm going to save my file. Tutorial file. Okay, friends. Now, I want to set up a few things here with you. We're going to go ahead and create um, a bit of some loops some cool funky things here. So click your triangle base loop, click new collection. I'm going to call it loop collection. Make it purple. And then what you can do here, let's go ahead and actually let's leave this for right now. What we're going to do next is bring in another circle triangle kind of funky thing. Rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to call this one glowing triangle. And I'm just going to bring it out a little bit just because I want to be able to see what's going on here. So <clears throat> you're not going to, this time we're not going to fill anything or touch that. What we're going to pretty much add here is a subdivide. 
and we're gonna pretty much keep the corners like make it simple simple subdivision here and what we're gonna do now is add the skin modifier okay now you see you're probably gonna see this as well look at ugly what the hell is this press tab press a and then control a and you're just gonna drag it down and from there you can kind of see now our thing is looking a bit better I believe you can add another subdivision on top of that and look at that it's a nice little triangle real simple once again give you guys the rundown so we subdivided it here I don't think it really changed much but we subdivided it add the skin modifier then we add another subdivision on top of it so now we have a nice triangle and then what I'm gonna do here is scale it down a little bit look at from the top I'm gonna bring in one and I'm just gonna add an array modifier now and our array modifier is gonna be on our constant offset within the Z value I'm gonna make it negative one Or negative three give it some distance and you can kind of see now what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna duplicate our triangle make my wireframe a few times we want it to pretty much just be within this container I go and switch this to the shader editor and let's start playing with colors let's make this exciting I know you've been just sitting here looking at this gray screen for a while now and it's just like what the fuck my guy like I want to do some cool shit. So let's go ahead and click this new added material to our glowing triangle. I'm going to call this neon triangle. It doesn't matter what you name it, by the way. I'm going to make this an emission. I'm going to keep things real simple for you guys. I'm going to make it blue. Let's make it like 30. I'm going to switch to material preview here. Okay. Let's just respond to material preview as well, actually. So we can kind of see what's going on here. So now you see we have our blue triangles. It's looking kind of cool. I'm going to pump mine up to like, here I'm going to play with it. Mm, maybe make it like green-ish. Ah, we, we can tinker with the colors later, but you see what I'm doing. Now with the triangle, I'm going to give a nice little material here. With the base loop, I'm going to call this base loop and I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the roughness a little bit a lot of it actually and I'm going to turn up the metallic to give it that nice little glow and then what we're gonna do here as well is we're gonna make it look a little darker too I don't want it to be too perfect and with our little red globe here, the world properties, we should make the strength to zero. I'm gonna switch this, oops, switch this to rendered by holding down Z. You can kind of see what's going on here. Click on our camera. Just gonna go ahead and turn on this just so I can see what I need to see. And you can see if you click space, we have a bit of an animation. Fun stuff. Okay. Now, that green could be overpowering for right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and like, I'm just going to crank down my strength a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my triangles a bit more thin by doing control A, and then I'll crank it back up. But now it looks a bit better. Okay. What you can also do, if you feel like your triangles are a bit high, you can just drop them a little bit. Just make sure it doesn't intersect too much with stuff. And now you can kind of feel it being a bit cooler. Okay, okay, okay. Next part. So what we're going to do is... Let's bring in our particle system. 
So the particle system is some fun stuff. And that's how essentially I made those like those lines that are just flying by. So what we're going to do is let's create those little lines first because that will be the easiest thing for us here. So you're going to bring in a cylinder, drag it out to the right, press RX90, scale it down by quite a bit. You want this to be pretty small and then scale it. Oops. Make a scale on the Y axis. Make it a bit long. Eh, that's good enough. Scale it down again. Then we're going to go ahead and call this particle 1. Emission. And give it a nice little, uh, for right now, get a nice little strong green color. Make, it, make three of them. I'm going to go ahead and just click this little cop duplicate kind of thing, particle 2. Make this one like a bit white. Duplicate it again. And make this one uh, like a yellowish color. Okay. Now, second thing we're going to do here now is we have our okay, new collection. Let's bring these cylinders out of this one. Press M, new collection. I'm going to call this particle objects. red okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a big uh, but let's make another triangle this is the best way to do it here make another triangle this one's gonna be you want it to honestly match the same size here be a bit bigger so you can press s to scale and we're gonna fill this one and then we're gonna go ahead and extrude this one. Oops, I can't, I wanna see the whole thing as I do it. Extrude this one to match essentially what we have going on here. Oh man. Okay, now you can kinda see we have some things going on here. Press, make sure you're on face select. Select the faces, delete that face. And delete this face. Okay, okay. Now, let's make sure we can name these things properly. Particle container. I'm going to call this new collection. Particle container. And bring this in here. Particle objects. Leave that alone. You want to make that thing with your particle container now. Let's go down by the particle system settings. This is those like uh, what is that like a graph kind of thing press this plus icon it's gonna be emitter now pay close attention to these settings this is how we get this one right I'm drinking some kombucha of course frame start is gonna be negative one and uh, zero lifetime make it the same lifetime as your your uh, project. You can, we can tinker around with the numbers soon. Uh, rotation, click yes. Make it a uh, global X, I believe. Let's just go ahead and leave that for right now. We can come back when we start adding it all in. Render. We're going to leave this for right now. We're coming back to that though. We're going to come back. Viewport, open that up too. Field weights. Make this zero. Oops. Uh, new one. Z uh, zero is fine. <coughs> now, render, make it collection, particle object. Now, make sure it's object X. Make sure that the source is volume. Use the modifier stack here, and it should work. So sorry about that. Make sure your rotation is object X and emit from volume. And you can kind of see we got we have our things, but they're kind of just like you know out here. Now what you're going to want to do is add the modifier solidify, bring it before this, 
Now pay close attention as you look at the shape here. As we increase the thickness on the offset is interesting. Make sure that hmm, disable show emitter. That will play heavily. Now we can play with the scale again of these objects. Personally, I don't like them to be too big. Go back into your wrench, and you can play with the thickness. And you can see what the thickness is. We're making sure that certain. We don't want these to be like completely in the view of the camera. If you do wireframe, you can kind of see here. It's in there, but it's not in the view of the camera. Oh, fuck. <laughs> in there. And they are animating, which we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is change physics. Hold on. I should have solved that. Within physics, just click none. So within physics, click none, and you should have our camera kind of running through this, and we have our particles, and we have our triangles, and things are things are rolling. Now you're like, okay, Mike, it's not infinite. So I'm gonna show you what it's gonna take, but we just need to do one last, three more things, three more things here. So. I like to give you guys the more difficult things first. So add in a point light and then drag it down a little bit. And what we're going to do with our point light is we're just going to bring it up here with the collection. And I'm going to make it really strong, like right around there. And just kind of make sure that it is, oops. A nice little sizable distance away. I'll make mine like just like red. Yeah, red is kind of cool. Make it around like 200. And we can make the radius kind of small ish. The bigger the radius, you can see the smaller radius, it gets like kind of interesting. Now, let's just front I want to make sure that it lines up with the camera okay right about there is okay now we're gonna parent our point light to the camera so you just click and hold shift connect it to the camera now we're gonna make this interesting now with our camera we're gonna rotate it now so the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go ahead and okay with rotating the camera, we're gonna keyframe the Y on zero. Keyframe it. You can do it negative 360, so it kind of feels a bit different. And you can see now it's rotating as we kind of like travel through it. And we'll talk a bit more about speed uh, later, but you can kind of see things are going on here. Uh, you can see some of our camera is colliding with some of these objects. It's getting quite close. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Now let's loop this all here. So this is going to be super simple. It's probably going to be the easiest part of it all. So you have our loop collection, right? Shift A, go down on collection instance, loop collection, drag it. Click there. Shift D, duplicate, drag it, control, hold on control, duplicate, bring it back here. We want our things to be lined up. Shift D, just keep duplicating it. Maybe duplicate it one more time. Let's bring one, oops, let's bring one over here. Sometimes these things don't find it straight up. You're gonna want it to line straight up. Okay. 
And what you're going to want to pay attention to is... Looks like our particle container might need to be... Hmm. Interesting. What we're going to do here with our particle container, because you can see towards the end, there's no particles, right? And we're just going to go ahead and shift Y. Just bring it up a lot. And run it, run this animation again. <laughs> now, if you look at the start, oh, you know why? It's not the lifetime needs to be a bit longer. Two, three, thirty. Make it last forever. We can even up the amount of lines in there. Oops, I meant to do 2,000, <laughs> not 200. And we pretty much have our close to finished animation. So with, I'm gonna click just like render out uh, a still for you guys with some motion blur and then let's go into color management real quick and just add some bit of some high contrast. Just gonna render out a still. You can see with a bit of motion blur, things look quite interesting, but I want things to be a bit more interesting. So let's just play with the compositing here. I'll mess with my render output real quick. I know everything's kind of all over the place here. It's been a while since I've done this triangle tutorial MP4. Thank you for bearing with me, everyone. I really appreciate, really, really appreciate it. I don't know how much I appreciate the really nice messages I've seen in the past. Okay, so with our viewer, we're gonna do a reroute, attach that, make sure you've turned on use nodes if you don't see anything here. And you can see with our viewer, we have some interesting stuff going on here. I personally turn on the lens distortion, add a little bit of some cool little flare. You don't want to get too crazy with that stuff. Then I add in a scale. I'm going to pixelate it a little bit because detail is cool, but personally, I like adding a bit of some scale. So bring it down, then bring it back up. Click a viewer so you can kind of see how much space you have here to play with. Then click render again. We got this cool like pixelated kind of uh, visual and if you want to play with it some more in terms of the colors you can add um, what is the curves RGB curves and this end you can just like kind of tinker with it it kills some of the bloom yeah right about there and um, let's say, okay, it's not fast enough for you. I'll show you uh, two tricks. One is very quick and the other is not that quick. So one trick is you click on the camera and then you can add a bit of, you can dial back a little bit on the focal length. So if you make it like 25, it does feel a bit faster. Personally, I like around like 30 or so. You can add some depth of field too if you really want. I learned this little trick here. If you press E on focus distance and then just like click um, essentially like kind of where you want it to focus on, it's like an eyedropper kind of tool. You just render it out one more time. You can see it. things are like kind of pixelated 2D, like uh, PS2-ish, but at the same time kind of unique and like sci-fi-y. So. It's pretty cool. You don't really need to add much uh, volume. Sometimes people add volume to make these things feel like they're looping a bit harder. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and avoid that for right now within this lesson, but I'll make another video in the future. So let's wrap this all up. Um, thank you a million times um, for all the appreciation. Everyone that I always see drop in and 
say kind words people that have seen me from tiktok the tiktok thing is definitely out of my element but i'm happy to be connecting with people that also want to learn i really want to dive deeper into a lot of these like visual effects um but yeah i just got a new job and i'll be doing some moving and stuff but i'll be trying to you know sprinkle in some tutorials here and there get back to those two tutorials a week kind of thing because i miss it i miss it i miss doing a lot of like blender stuff and i miss being a part of the community but regardless, thank you once again, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out.